This is Rage Against the Fridge, a highly explosive flipper. We're used to seeing it flip 110 kilogram chunks of metal into the air, but that doesn't come close to showing the true power of it. We've got an everyday household item that you all know and love, an internet router. Go on, give it a flip! Wait, this isn't the one our Wi-Fi comes from, right? Everybody and welcome back to Bashbots. I am your host, the Dominus Ignis, and alongside me is our match analyst, the Damn Beaver. As we close in on the end of the regular season, the chances for the robots to impress the selection committee are becoming scarcer. If they do impress enough, however, they will make it into the top 16 bracket and will have a chance to raise the giant wrench at the end of the tournament. This could be the last fight for a lot of the robots here, so there are absolutely insane implications on the line for pretty much all of these fights. It's do or die, so let's take a look at the fight cards for tonight. First up, it's a battle between Rage Against the Fridge and Tender Love. Both robots sit at 1-1 one one after taking round 2 losses, so a win here would reignite their championship challenge. After that, Calcifer, Thunderwave and Devastation will all take to the arena. All of these robots also sit at 1-1, one one, so there is some big stakes on the line. After that, more 1-1 one one action as Erod, Huge and Slapshot will all battle out to take their second win of the season. All of them are the backs of wins in Rumbles, so they all have reason to be confident. Continuing the 1-1 one one battles, it's a match between Shock Factor and Catch. Both robots have proven to be strong competitors, but this fight could mark the end for one of them. Finally, for our main event, the Season 2 Champion Polis will be taking on Atlas. Both robots are looking to make it to 3 and 0. Oh. Let's get into our first fight. Opening up tonight, I would like to remind our viewers that Bashbots is the kind of show that has so many emotions running through it. Tears, anger, surprise, amazement, maybe even a bit of love. And tonight we have two of those emotions clashing as Tender Love is ready to go up against Rage Against the Fridge. Tender Love. It won very cleanly against Mulsan in their first fight, and yes, it lost the decision to Panther. Something else that's important in Bashbots is knowledge. Neroli is aware of how quickly fights can turn. He isn't completely confident in his wedge for some reason. He is going to be careful, um, and that could turn things in Tender Love's favour. I feel Neroli's lack of confidence here could prove to be their undoing. Rage Against the Fridge is able to turn a fight into a victory for them just like that before you even realise it. They're hoping that Tender Love will be an easier fight, and well, if that wedge of Tender Love isn't low enough, it very well could be. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's robot fighting time! Let's bring out the bots! In the red square, from the United Kingdom, clearly built out of connects, it's Tender Love! In the blue square, from the UK, I can see the fridge, but the rage is still pending. It's Rage Against the Fridge! Widest robot in the world. In hot flipping action. No chance. No chance. This is a fight that requires a fair bit of driving strategy, which I'm probably not mentally capable of because I have sadly caught the uh, uh, COVID 29 Director's Cut edition. So my brain powers took a bit of a hit, but we fought before and I did control them pretty well and win that fight. Hopefully I can just autopilot and do the same. Robots at 
Well, Tenderlove never fails to make it to the later stages of a Bashbot's bracket, but after that split decision loss to Panther, another loss here against Rage Against the Fridge could put them out entirely. That would be an upset. Well then, here we go, and a loss here for Tender Love would mean Tenta hooks for it going forward. Lost the last fight in a very close one, and the start here is suggesting Worry 2. Brilliant early onslaught from Rage against the Fridge. Yes, certainly Tender Love's builder, captain and driver was very, very worried about this opponent and does see it as a loss, but also when doesn't he? I think <laughs> the last time I saw that builder show any sort of confidence will have been... Uh, well, never really, but this is a good little recovery after that opening onslaught. The most brilliant bot, but the most underconfident driver of all time, maybe. What can it do here? It has recovered after that interesting start it had, and the brilliant flips from Rage Against the Fridge. It's a little flick over from the opponent there, and a mistimed flick as Tenderlove tries to reposition itself too. Interesting. Tender love. It has a real tendency to get those sharpened forks underneath its opponent, but its side wedgelets often aren't quite the same. They've even improved it this season, putting those bladed wedgelets onto those sides. It still wasn't enough, oh, but that's a brilliant slam into the grinder from Tender Love. Proper good Tender Love attack there. What we are used to it from it at its best, and now it sneaks in behind. But Rage against the fridge readjusts really Ooh. well. Both take a little hit there from the drums at the side of the arena. And that's a really good repost as well. Okay, so readjustment period as the pit becomes an option. I don't know if either one of these robots will want to risk that, oh. but the floor flipper will be coming into play quite excellently so. This is a really lively opening fight to this episode. Just over a minute to play. Both have had their moments. Rage Against the Fridge has had the more attacks. Oh. And that's another one in there as the pit is pressed. Will it come into play here? Tenderlove deciding it does want to take that risk, but simply the process of pressing the button is what got it attacked. Will there be regret? Well, we'll wait to see if this match ends with a surprise pitting. And ideally not in the same fashion as its first fight, where Tenderlove itself was pitted. Thankfully, one second too late. But the oh. spikes! are going to be involved instead. And with 40 seconds to play, it's yet another fight here where Tender Love is having to sweat it out right till the end. It comes in there and raises against the fridge as it gets flipped by the floor flipper there. And it comes in with another attack. It's going to have to be a late rally here because that's another flip from its opponent. Is Tender Love on the verge of losing another fight here, maybe? This is a really lively opening fight to this episode. Both have had their moments. Rage Against the Fridge has had the more attacks. And that's another one in there. What on earth is happening in there? There is seconds to play. The control has been decent, but there have been mistakes from both of these two. And especially if you're going to put yourself in that corner against a pneumatic flipper, you don't want to be there. The match will draw to a close. That is a close one. Neither one of these robots will want to fall to one and two, but somebody, unfortunately, will have to. Another nail-biting Tenderlove match. Unbelievable. So let's see which of these robots it's going to be. Tenderlove perhaps had more attacks in general, depending on what you count. I'd say Rage Against the Bridge had more flips. Tenderlove had more attacks that didn't make use of the weapon. They still did have plenty of fork-based attacks. The arena hazards came into play on both machines quite equally, usually by fault of accidental driving rather than an attack. Tenderlove did get them sometimes. The results from the judges are in. We have a unanimous decision. And the winner is... Tenderlove! And winning by judges' decision, Tenderlove is now two and one. They're rebounding nicely here, and their chances of getting into the top 16 are looking brighter. 
However, Rage Against the Fridge's run this season ends here, finishing one and two. Let's head into the next fight. We all know how much you love your rumbles, right? Well, I'm happy to announce that we have two of them lined up for you tonight. And let's go take a look at the first one. Now, Thunderwave is not that experienced in Rumbles. In fact, this is going to be their first Rumble. However, this weapon is almost tailor-made for a situation like this. I mean, imagine it. Calcifer is coming in from the left. Devastation's coming in from the right. It doesn't matter because they'll both still get hit by Thunder Wave's devastating weapon. We've already seen Marrow win some Rumbles with some incredibly well-controlled driving and we've seen it win those rumbles very convincingly. I think that alone is a good reason to back it, but also it has a special anti-horizontal plow for this fight. That's huge against something like Thunder Wave. We can't discount Devastation. Their exposed wheels do give them a pretty bad disadvantage in a rumble like this. However, Toad believes that they can keep the wheels at bay and the blade pointed towards the robots. And with Toad being as skilled as they are, that could very well be possible. Whoever loses this fight is out. Again, the stakes are so high. Let's get down to the arena. Three-way rumbles, a new environment for Thunderwave. Usually their seeding carries them into straight head-to-heads. They're going to have to work extra hard to beat these two, if indeed they can. Well, here we go, and it's another one of these freeway melees, just like the one we saw earlier in the season with Firewave, where there is a big, notable oh. Bashbot's name in there, but they have to fight for their place. Oh, Whoa. it's Thunderwave waving to the ceiling there early on. Yes, and we've also got the season debut of Devastation over there, the light blue spinner. Their win so far is another one of these rumbles, having originally lost uh, to bad language, but Thunderwave is undeniably the focus of attention here. Always a Bashbot success, it's strange to even see them in this position. They've not done too badly at one and one, but when you're an opponent, when you're in a rumble with two other opponents, the win only becomes harder. Somebody will get this though. Very balanced match so far, just under a minute played and everybody's had a little poke and a prod at each other so far and <laughs> Devastation's mostly prodded into the uh, arena hazards at times to be honest as Thunder Wave yes. clips upwards and Calcifer looks quite robust so far yeah reluctant to use its weapon oh. you don't really want to put it in the path of a big spinner but if they don't get some weapon usage in at some point during this fight they may not be able to win the judge's decision on aggression Thunder Wave meanwhile it's playing its game it's got the most airtime in this fight Devastation, uh, well, they haven't done a huge amount in comparison to the other two. I would say they need to put a bit more work in if they want to keep their hopes alive. The fight gone as Calcifer gets toppled over by the Arena Hazard. Devastation again is trying to play catch up, Ooh. but there's some damage. It's nothing amazingly notable, but it is part of Thunderwave's front wedge, and it is the biggest damage we've seen so far. So, is this the start of a comeback from Devastation, maybe? Yes, I told them to make one and they have really started that one until they go straight headfirst into the wall. A good play from Calcifer to get the pit open, Ooh. that's what they need to do because although they've been perhaps the most controlled robot in the fight, they're still yet to complete even a single weapon-based attack. I'm not sure they can win oh this my purely off God. the back of resistance. Everybody well, they've got a lot flying. more to resist all of a sudden. 45 seconds to go, we had a close intense fight to open the episode. This is close in a chaotic way. And Calcifer is now lining up and unlikely pitting oh. on Thunderwave. And then Devastation comes in with a hit on an overturned Ow. Thunderwave. It's all going off in there. Thunderwave, I'm surprised that self-writing mechanism is still attached after that massive hit from Devastation while Thunderwave was upside down. Maybe that's oh. the reason it's so big. It's invincible. What on earth is happening in there? There is seconds to play. It's been Devastation with the biggest hit, but the least control. 
Thunderwave with the most consistent hits, but a lack of control. And Calcifer with the most control, but no real damage. Who is going to win this one? Can we have a three-way split decision? Can everyone vote for one robot each until they all win? <laughs> Jesus, that was... That was a crazy fight. Right, so let's review the footage and see what we can possibly come up with off the back of this one. Truly, a three-way split decision would be a first in robot combat history, but we'll see if the judges can get anything decisive out of this. Calcifer the lowest and the most consistent in taking the fight to its opponent, but ultimately the three minutes did elapse. Thunderwave, they got some big hits. Devastation perhaps bigger, but was it enough? The judges' results are in! The winner by unanimous decision is... Calcifier! And Calcifier takes the judges' decision win, moving to a much safer 2 on 1 and devastation, and shockingly enough, Thunderwave finished their season on a rather disappointing 1 and 2. And now we move on to the next rumble, and this one is one I'm personally excited about. A Gary's Wars classic in E-Rod taking the stage. We have Slapshot, who has origins in Robot Arena 2. And finally, from real life, we have Huge, and they're all squaring off in the same arena. Honestly, Beaver, when I saw that this fight was on the cards, I got so excited. But Slapshot, I think, has a lot of potential. Now, while it did lose to Amethyst, it's Amethyst. Let's be honest, you can't really hold a robot losing to Amethyst against it. With Mr. BK having rebuilt the robot, I think that they're ready for this rumble. Huge is definitely a very good pick to win this fight. Yes, it did lose to Rampage all the way back in episode one, but it showed so much potential with that weapon. It's launched itself high into the air several times. Not to mention, Jonathan is far more familiar with how the robot handles in-game compared to real life. He has been learning throughout this entire tournament, and he has only been becoming more powerful as time goes on. There is always a chance that Aerod could win. I mean, it is... it's a thing, alright? It's certainly uh, unique. So, I don't think we should waste any more time, do you? I think we should head on down to the arena and watch what I think could be an exceptional battle here. Uh, yeah, uh, opinion of a professional robot here. Do you think uh, E-Rod could be done? <laughs> I mean, it's the shape that you could make a robot out of, but you'd have to buy a lot of little plastic babies for it. Why are you here, business cat? Hi, Coach Jonathan. Well, I think very few would have expected to see E-Rod get even this far, but they've got the opportunity for a statement win against Huge and Slapshot here. As does everyone else. <laughs> well, I say it almost every melee we have in Bashbox, but it's even more so here because with the machines we have in action, expect the unexpected. It's huge, Erod and Slapshot. Who will make the first move? And it's Erod that tumbles with the horse stable. Meanwhile, I think it's worth bringing a little bit of attention to Slapshot here. They seem to have attached some kind of golf club onto their lifting weapon. The idea here being to slot it in between the gaps in Huge's wheels and then lift it up with it. The trouble is, the golf club is already gone. It took exactly one hit. Yeah, I mean, either that or that was the, uh, the only thing they could bolt onto it after that huge rebuild they had to have from the Amethyst fight. And their fight. three mechs are not even parallel with each other right now. So it's, it's all not really gone to plan for Slapshot so far. I'd say Huge has been the most stable and consistent here, but you may not be able to fit a golf club through Huge's wheels, but you can slot a horse through it, apparently. This is some quality horse action. Interesting stuff here. Who knows how many horse hits it will take to knock that tread off of oh, huge! Oh no! Big hit, and it's the horse that succumbs first to the huge weaponry! There's the carcass on the floor! And is that a game changer here? With one minute 30 to play as a tyre goes from E-Rod 2. The horse goes, everything goes it seems. Huge is actually the first person to uh, de-horse me. 
I've still got a ladder though. They've lost another wheel as well. I think they're well and truly out of this, but at least they've done some heroism for the stat padders. A ladder bot, it may not have been for most of this season, but it certainly is now. A shame they can't use it to self right seemingly. They're more mobile than I would have expected, but it's oh, not going to last much bird. longer, is it? Well, Huge Ooh. is finally making a statement, but they slap shot from nowhere with a really good fling on the decapitating and decomposing Erod. Just about still in this fight. The slap shot is. is still fully functional as well, but apart from that flip, Ooh. hasn't done too much. But that's a cheeky attack. It has 45 seconds to do more. It was a good attack, but they had to take some damage in the process. I would have said the strategy for Slapshot here is unfortunately, you've got to get the KO on yeah. Erod and take some damage for it. But Huge has gotten all the damage on Erod here. And in my opinion, must be well on top. Slapshot, it's kind of a little bit too late to claim a kill on Erod at this point, which is practically already dead. It's hanging on there somehow. But maybe if they could get Huge into the pit, that would oh, change 20 things. 20 seconds to play, and even Erod was trying to pit Huge there with its one wheeled wagon. Oh, that was a collision! <laughs> and Huge oh. nearly went too close to that pit! Five seconds to play, we had a lot of drama in the second half of this fight! And there goes the final wheel, and that ends the fight. Wow! Oh god, it's over. God, I should have gone over the arm sticks instead of that one. F so we'll look at those opening stages. I guess this is when Slapshot needed to most focus its attention on knocking out Erod if it wants any KO points. Instead, they went for the golf club attachment to deal with Huge, which did not work out at all. The main story here was Huge just demolishing Erod bit by bit. They had some worries with the pit. Slapshot was able to get some good flips. Not so much on Huge, it's bigger worry. The judges' results are in! The winner by unanimous decision is... Huge! Huge takes the win by a judges' decision, moving up to 2 and 1. Anyway, now we're moving on to the next battle. It's Shock Factor versus Catch. Eddie has built one hell of a robot, and I think it shows now. Catch V4 is the best of all of its previous iterations and more. It's flipped Cyberstorm right out of the arena. It lost a close decision to Atlas in the fight right after. The robot's just such a huge improvement that I think Catch just has the general quality it needs to take the win here. Shock Factor got a pretty good win against Hospice and its loss was against Polis. So again, I can't hold that against Shock Factor, especially because they put up a pretty good fight. Badnik says that the issues from their first fights have definitely been resolved at this point. So Catch is dealing with Shock Factor at full capacity. Catch, at the very least, is going to have a hell of a fight on its hands. With all this factored in, Shock Factor could end up taking the victory on this one. So this is the third time this season that we'll be seeing Catch, easily one of the most improved robots from seasons past. They've had a fantastic season, but if they do lose to Shock Factor, it could all go out the window. And away we go. Slope machines on offer here and machines that have had interesting and encouraging moments already this season as they get to grips with each other in the opening period of the fight. Yes, Shock Factor making its way under those very, very low scratching fork, fork claws of Catch, but it's ultimately Catch who's going to get some weaponry involved. Shock Factor, I guess they mainly want to get under Catch and keep a hold of it to drive it around the arena. Catch the game plan is going to be a lot more simple. They may be the favoured one to take this, but Shock Factor, we can't overlook their wins of their own. They did indeed do fairly well against Polis in their only defeat. Yes, and what you see at the moment, these two machines 
juggling for position is what you'll see for a lot of this fight. It's going to be skidding and steering out there. They're both low, they're both boxy and wide at the same time. And they both have interesting Whoa. weaponry, which they need Whoa. to pick up. And although Catch gets a really good flip in, it gets flipped itself by our Arena Arena. <laughs> Wiener cleaning. <laughs> and over the front of Catch, the shock factor will go. I think we're kind of at that point in the fight where we need to see any sort of controlled attack from Shock Factor. They've done some decent wedging, but Catch has done some decent wedging and some good flipping. Oh, this could be more there. like it. That's a little backhanded lift. Yeah, the problem with Shock Factor there, with that backhanded lift, is that Catch can obviously get traction with its rear tyres, but here is an alternative route. Clamp and drive, and this is a good period of pressure suddenly from Shock Factor. Shock factor increasing indeed. We didn't quite know that they could pull that one off. The pit button is nearby, and I would say it would benefit shock factor a little bit more than catch. Both of them quite equipped to get underneath the other and drive them into that pit. Shock factor may need that extra knockout power. The weapon not the most aggressive. Certainly aids in control, but yes, they have gone for that pit. They'll want to clamp down on catch and drag it straight in there. As this fight's gone on, Shock Factor has been working its way underneath Catch more and more. Still only one or two attacks of note from both machines, and it is close and tense, and it could take that hitting opportunity to be the winner here. Really Ooh. good attack from Catch, though. So good at those opportunistic moments this, this season. But it's Shock Factor with a clever response. Great varied stuff in the arena here. Once again, pointing those front forks at Shock Factor is genuinely oh. going to put Catch lower, and that was serving the pancake. Away it goes. Oh, such a thin machine could easily swap down any of those gaps, and they have oh, done. Oh, toppling over in the end. A triple flip from Catch, and the final flip as well. What a fun fight that was, and Catch goes to two and one. I like how even after Spoodle fixed my wedge, it still sucks ass. Well, we were almost getting set to think who would have been taking this judge's decision. Catch the more aggressive with its weapon. Shock factor, maybe the more controlled with its own weapon usage. Aggression, you could you could really split anyway. But in the end, the judges weren't needed. And flipping shock factor right out of the arena. Catch before moves up to two and one. Marking the end of Shock Factor season though, they finish at 1 and 2, but I definitely hope we'll be seeing them again someday. Now, before we move on, we're going to show you how two more robots took victories. First up, Sparks faced off against Loki. Despite having periods of good control, the damage from the Season 1 champ was too much for Loki to handle, and it was torn to shreds. It did, however, just about make it to the end of the fight but Sparks took the decision, moving to 2-0. After that, it was a battle between Cosmo and Vertically Unchallenged. The fight didn't last long though, as Cosmo utterly obliterated its opponent, repeatedly taking chunks of the robot until it was counted out. They advanced to 2 and one but that's enough about these robots, let's move on to the main event! And now we move on to the Bashbots main event with Polis versus Atlas two incredible robots on this one. Polis has won both of its previous fights in emphatic fashion, getting them both out of the arena. Kroger already knows that Freeman is a very good driver, but I think Kroger is also extremely good in the arena. This is going to be one hell of a driving battle. We've seen that this before. Freeman is such a controlling and aggressive driver. He's not going to make it easy for Polis to catch him, let alone flip him. The 6 wheel drive system has been working so well for Atlas, and being a flipper, Polis is a robot that really has to time and aim its flips if it wants to get any use out of them, otherwise it's a sitting duck for something like Atlas. Atlas, however, doesn't have to time its attacks nearly as much, it doesn't rear up when it attacks, and I think that could be what changes the fight here. This is going to be an exceptional fight either way, potentially one of the great main events for Bashbots. So I don't want to waste your time, I don't want to waste the viewers time, let's just get down to the arena for this main event action! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event! 
in the Red Square from Ireland. Can never and will never be any different. It's Polis! In the Blue Square from Wales. There's too many vowels in this robot's name for it to be Welsh. It's Atlas! The plan is to go in at an angle. I think that'll make it a bit easier to get under him. And uh, if I do manage to, to do that, flip him around a bit. The plan is always to uh, get him out of the arena. Uh, strategy is just full out aggression. I mean, you can't really do much against Polis except be aggressive if it's not flipping you, that is. So, pretty much it. Um, don't think I'm going to win, but we'll see. Well, if you're of the opinion that Polis should have beaten Sparks in the previous season, this could have been our third place playoff. But these two mega successes will be meeting now, only one can go to 3-0. It's main event time and it's a battle definitely fitting of a main event. Both these machines, top dogs, both of them with mass respect for the other. Oh. And that's an immediate big fling from Polis. This could be a cracker. Yeah, there's a close look at the brand new six wheel drive system for Atlas. It's not quite benefiting them so far. There's a little incidental lift, but that's more of an attack. Strong start from our green and black machine, but never ever will Latlas out. It's worked its way into the Bashbot's higher tier with some really strong performances. This would be one of its strongest and most notable wins ever if it's able to pull it off. But so far here, Polis looks very aggressive. Whoa, Ooh. over the top it goes though. Yes, this is a notable matchup in that we do have our last season's third place in Atlas against the former oh. champion in Polis, someone who was arguably robbed of a spot in that top four the previous season. But I think another notable thing about these two robots is that essentially, neither of them, we've only ever seen them lose to one robot, Atlas losing to Cosmo in quite unfortunate fashion, or Polis has only ever lost to Sparks, that's happened twice now. But here, one will be meeting quite definitively another bonus loss, and so far it's shaping up to be Atlas. Oh, another good flick from Polis there. This is a frenetically paced battle. Both drivers having to twitch those thumbs at an incredible rate as they try to keep up with each other, and it's Atlas this time with a lift of its own. Polis has definitely had the better share of this with half the fight gone, but Atlas wow. is still a factor. Yes, and I do definitely agree with the decision to get the pit open. Atlas oh. likely wouldn't win this on a judge's decision, but if they can win by KO, then they have nothing to worry about. Hence. That six-wheel drive system of Polis is keeping them away, but we're in that dangerous corner. Polis, does it have the composure to escape? Does it have the room to and escape? Clamp down. Atlas is closing to? in, and it only just narrowly misses. Oh. And then Polis says, get out of my face and we return to the norm that we saw in the opening period. Oh my word, breathless. Polis has no intention of winning this fight via pitting. It's only Atlas that was actively trying to end the match here. Polis instead bringing us back to center stage for its own safety. Atlas gets another topple though. Can they close that lifter? They haven't really used it as a clamp like they could be doing to control this match just that little bit more. Oh, it's been a fantastically enticing driving fight out there. Both machines have had their moments. It's Atlas with another little cheeky lift. And Polis is going up again. It's had the better visual attacks, Polis. Atlas maybe with the more number of lifts in. Will it be enough overall though? I don't know. That's the end of the fight and Atlas gets three or four lifts in at the end there. Who knows? Oh, that didn't end well. I, I don't, you had it definitely at the start, but that was so good.
we were saying just within the match, these are two robots that we've almost never seen lose. Polis with that decisive loss to Sparks in Season 1 and then a very debatable one in Season 3. Atlas, meanwhile, only losing to Cosmo in uh, very unfortunate accidental circumstances. What we came into this fight looking for was to see the first decisive loss for either of these guys, but instead what we got was one of the closest fights perhaps in Bashbot's history. Who's won this one? I haven't the foggiest idea. That's going to have to come down to our esteemed judging panel. Do you rate the exciting flips of Polis or the controlled measured pacing of the fight from Atlas? Two completely different styles but both played so well. The judges results are in. We have a split decision. And the winner is Polis. And Polis moves to 3-0. Pretty much becoming a lock for the bracket right now, but it's still one more fight to impress the committee even more. As far as main events go, I think that was about as good as they can get. What did you think, Beaver? I think the fight could have gone either way. Both drivers showed spectacular driving skills in that, and they should both be proud of their performances. And I think it goes without saying that Polis, now 3-0, is definitely a contender for a top seeding. Alice is now 2-1 with that loss to Polis, but they should still be in a safe position for the championship if they perform in their next fight. Big picture tonight though, that win for Tenderlove couldn't have come at a better time. Calcifer and Huge both with the wins they needed as well, and Catch looking as deadly as ever with another out of the arena. And with that, another night of destruction comes to a close. With only two nights left in the regular season, things are going to get very interesting. That's all from us here tonight at Bashbot. We thank you very much for watching and we hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time, good night.